Hey chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over lesson 5.03, balance chemical reactions. So the objective is simply to balance chemical reactions. So you're already watching this lesson and take notes. And so let's go ahead and get started. We balance chemical equations to have equal masses and the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the chemical equation because of the law of conservation of mass. So the mass of the reactants need to equal the mass of the products. To balance, we change coefficients, never subscripts. So let's define those two words. Subscript, the little numbers to the right of an element that tells how many atoms of that element are present. So whenever you start balancing, we draw a line to separate our reactant from our products. Remember the arrow points to the product. And then I go through and I just simply write down all the elements that are involved and I do that on both sides. And so I use my subscripts and I say, okay, over on the left, I have two hydrogens. And if I were gonna draw that out, what that looks like is one molecule of hydrogen with two hydrogen atoms bonded together. And then I also have two oxygens because oxygen also has a subscript of a two there. And so let's go ahead and draw our two oxygens. Now our two oxygens are also bonded together as one molecule. Then over on the other side, I have H2O. I have one oxygen because there's not a subscript here. We could put a one there if we wanted to, but we don't have to. And so there are one oxygen and how many hydrogens? Two. Okay, so it's the number right after that tells how many. So we could also draw in our hydrogens. And now we have water. Okay, now if we notice, it's not balanced. While we have the same number of hydrogens on both sides, we have more oxygens on the left or the reactant side than we do on the right. That's when we start adding coefficients. Coefficients are the big number to the left of the element or compound. So it tells us how many of that thing, how many of that element, or how many of that molecule are present. When finding how many total atoms of an element are present, the coefficient gets distributed like in math class. All right, so what that tells us is that this two gets distributed down there to give us a total of four hydrogens on the left hand side. Also with that, what it means is that now, since I have two H2, if I were gonna draw that out, I have two molecules of H2 and each one has two H's. So I wanna make sure you know the difference between this. The difference between two H and H2, there's a very big difference, okay? Two H's means that there's two individual H's. H2 means that there's one molecule and there's two hydrogens bonded together. This is an important concept to get, okay? And yes, I'm expecting that you have this all written down in your notes. So if you need to finish listening to me, then maybe go back and take notes, that's fine. This takes practice. It helps if you think of it like a game or a puzzle, whichever one you like more. It takes practice, it's really confusing at first, and then once you get it, it's pretty easy by the end, and it's actually kind of fun, because you realize how hard it was when we started, and then once you get done, you're like, oh, cool, I can do this. So, all right, so down here, again, I put a two in front to say I have two copies of H2 for a total of two hydrogens on the left-hand side. Now, for my oxygen, I still just have O2, so okay, so my total oxygens equal two. And now over here, I'm going to, again, write down all the elements that I have, and I'm gonna write down how many I have. So like I said, it distributes. It's like there's a big set of parentheses around the entire molecule. So I distribute the two to that two, two times two equals four. I distribute the two to the oxygen, 
there is not a number there, so what number do we assume is there? A 1, so 2 times 1 equals 2. And again, I can draw it out. So now I have two copies of H2O. Two copies of H2O. And this orange dot here is nothing. This is just part of the PowerPoint that I was using, sorry. All right, and then I also need some oxygens. Each water molecule has one oxygen. So I have two copies, two molecules. Each molecule is H2O. And now it's balanced on both sides. So again, to balance, we add coefficients. And you can only add them to the outsides. So I could not put this two in the middle. Okay, or at the end, it has to go in front of the entire molecule or compound. And that is how you balance chemical equations. Now, I do want to show you something with polyatomic ions. If there's a polyatomic ion with parentheses and a subscript, distribute that subscript to the entire polyatomic ion. What I mean by that, this two, because of these parentheses, it's the whole polyatomic ion family. So that means there's two copies of PO4. So that means I have PO4. I have three bariums. So, all right. BA, BA. And this isn't the correct way to draw this, but it's going to work for now. And then I have another PO4 family, okay, because it's a polyatomic ion. So here you can see I have my one phosphate, my two phosphates. And when you draw it out, it's easier to count how many you have. So especially when you're starting, there's nothing wrong with just drawing them out. All right, so then mathematically now, I would say that this two is going to distribute. So how many oxygens do I have total? I have a total of eight oxygens. This is two times four. And how many phosphoruses do I have? Well, there's just that one there. So two times one tells me that I have two phosphoruses. And how many bariums? Three. I'm supposed to see eagles, sorry about that. All right, so now let's do an example down here. So I just have the one compound, and I want you to go through and tell me how many of each atom there are. All right, so again, you should be practicing this in your notes as well. And barium, there's three because of the subscript, and there's a five out front, so there's five copies of this. I would have to draw this five times to show this. So five times three is 15. If you need to use a calculator, go ahead. Then I want to start with this. So let's do the phosphorus next. So two times one gives me two. Two times five gives me 10. Again, every single one of these has two phosphoruses. If I have five copies of it, five times two is 10. And then let's do the oxygen. So in just one molecule, there's eight, but now I have five copies of it. So eight times five is 40. Okay, when you look at the lessons, you're going to notice that there's the part one and the part two. The part one is going to be the post. It's going to tell you to listen to this recording. I'm going to talk through part two, but I'm leaving you have access to it. The reason is there are some live links in here I actually want you to go through and do to practice because balancing equations takes practice. All right, so let me back up to the beginning of the lesson. So chemical equations must be balanced in, to be in accordance with the law of conservation of mass. So the amount of reactants has to equal the amount of products. Again, a chemical equation must reflect the law of conservation of mass. Now, if we look at this, Al plus O2 yields Al2O3. This is not balanced. 
There's one aluminum over here, and how many on the right? Two. There's two oxygens on the left, three oxygens on the right. It's not balanced. And so that's why we add the coefficients. All right, so here we can see we have aluminum plus dioxide. So one molecule with two oxygens bonded. And how do we say the arrow again? Yields, like a yield sign when you're driving. Yields. Al2O3. And they're not balanced. So they said, all right, well, let's add some coefficients. And it turns out you need four aluminums on this side, three copies of the O2, so a total of six oxygens on this side, a total of six oxygens on this side, which you get by having two copies, so two times three is six, and you have four aluminums. Two times two is four. All right, so let's do some practicing. Oh, I already did this one for you, but let's do this one. All right, step one. So step one says that they just kind of go through it and do the pictures for you, and that's okay. You can draw it and figure it out that way. To me, what I find the easiest thing to do is to simply rewrite your equation. Okay, I cannot stress enough how much pen and paper are important to this part. If we were in a brick and mortar classroom, I would walk around and make you write this all down. Not to be mean, but because it's the easiest way to do this. And sometimes in online, I know we don't write stuff down. We kind of get lazy about that. Pen and paper. you got to have pen and paper for this section. It's going to be so much easier. All right, so the first thing I always do is I make a list. I say how many CLs are on both sides, how many LIs, and how many BRs. And I just go ahead and I make my list in the same order because I want to keep everything kind of neat and orderly. And then I'm going to write equal sign for how many I have of each. Chlorine on the left, how many are there? Two, because of the subscript. Lithium on the reactant side on the left, how many? One, because there was nothing written, so we assume it's a one. How many bromines? One. Right hand side, how many chlorines? One. How many lithiums? One. How many bromines? Two. Okay, so I need to balance my chlorine. And I need to get a total of two. And I do that by adding a coefficient, which means I have to multiply by something. So I had one there originally. One times what equals two? Well, obviously it's going to be a two. And so I put a two out here in front of, oh my gosh, how about I do it on the right side? Sorry about that, guys. Right here. I put it in front of the entire compound. I cannot put it in the middle like that. No, it can't hover in the middle. It has to be in front of the entire compound. So now I not only have two chlorines, but I also have what? I have two lithiums. I don't care that I had one before. Scribble it out. I have two. All right, let's go to the left side. Well, now I need two lithiums. So what am I going to do? One times what equals two. Well, it's going to be two again, and so I'm going to put a two in front of the entire compound. What else does that change? Well, two lithiums and two bromines. And look at that. I have a balance. In this case, I happen to have two of everything. It's rarely two of everything, but in this case it is. And now my chemical equation is balanced. So again, if we look at the pictures, they did it pictorially, and you can see here why it works out that way as well. All right, so now I'm going to wait till the next recording to start this one because I'm about to run out of time, um, but we'll go ahead and go through this in the next video.